Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. So here's something for you. This thing down here called Enter Console Command. Do you know what it's for? Do you know what it does? It's, if you don't know, it's for adding commands into the editor. So you, things you can type in like stat FPS to show current FPS. And you can repeat that. There's also a bunch more of commands you can do. But how do you add commands to it? It used to be the common thing that you had to do it via C++, right? Ah, my recent discoveries, and from the few videos I've seen online, you can actually do it in Blueprints. You can add your own console commands in Blueprints. And it's super useful, and we're going to take a look today. So let's get started. So, let's cover it first. Why would you want a console command? Not everybody uses it. Isn't it just for geeks and nerds and stuff like that? Well, it used to be because the word console puts a lot of people off, like terminal or command line, stuff like that. But the console is actually a really, really good way to quickly activate, basically, dev mode things into your game. Now, the way Unreal gives it to you is named incredibly badly... It's called the Cheat Manager. You may have saw it sometimes. I used to see it all the time on old Unreal training videos. The Cheat Manager. But it's not a Cheat Manager. It's, it kind of is, but only in the editor. These console commands down here only exist when you're playing the game in develop mode or in the engine. That's it. If you try to export your game for a proper production build, these commands won't exist anymore. I actually think on a production build, you don't even have access to the console commands at all. But they're really, really useful for debugging things. So say I'm in the middle of a quest and I want to skip the next task, we can write a console command for that. If you want to quickly kill all the enemies in an area, you can write a console command for it. So let's have a go at it then. So I'm on my demo map here. Basically, walk up to this person, you can talk to her, and then you can tell her to change the time of day. That's it. It's using Ultra Dynamic Sky, but that is not required. So now I've made it rain, you can see the clouds are coming, it's now starting to rain up. That's it. But what if we were far away? What if we were all the way over here, doing something, checking a tree, a chest, and we wanted to see what it looks like if it rains? Are we really going to run all the way back over there to do it? No. So how do we actually get started? It's actually really easy to do. So you can do this in C++, but equally you can do it in Blueprints. I'm going to be doing it in Blueprints for myself. So if you just find where you want to put it, I'll put it in my MISC folder. Right-click Blueprint class, and you are looking for the class called Cheat Manager, that one there. I don't know what the extension is. Maybe we can find out a different way one day. But for now, Cheat Manager, and I'm going to call it BP Game Cheat Manager, really. And I'm going to open it up, like so. Then this is where we start creating our cheats. You basically create a function for each console command you want to use. So let's do a very, very basic one. Let's just print something out. So I'm going to create a new function, and I will simply call it print. Yeah, print. I don't think that's an existing one. And then from here, we'll just drag off and tell it to print out something saying hello. All right, so let's do the typical one. Hello world. There we go. I'm going to click the print command, and this is the key thing. You've got to tick exec here, otherwise it won't work. This basically allows the cheat manager to actually work. So if we do compile and save, now the only thing we have to do is tell our game how to use the cheat manager. And that is as simple as going to your player controller and searching for cheat class right here, and just setting it to your custom cheat manager. That's it. So now if I start the game, and you'll see it's, this is dead simple. We're like five minutes into an unedited video, and we've already got one working. Press the tilde key, which is the one next to number one above the tab key for most keyboards, and just type print. And you'll see it said hello world. It didn't see it in the list for some reason, but I think it's because so many other things said print. But every time I type print, hello world. You can also press tilde and the up arrow key to select recently done ones. So you can see I was looking at my draw count the other day. Print hello world. There we go. So you've got one basic command already. So let's expand this command. Then. How can we make it even better? Well, what if we tell it what we want to print out? So let's go back to the cheat manager, click my print. Let's just connect the string to it just like that and create a node in string. And we'll hit compile and save. 
And if I go back into my game again and press the tilde key and search for print, and then I can put space and I can type whatever I want. So we'll go testing and you'll see it will now print out testing, which means you can find things. How cool is that? I don't know if you can put spaces in it or not. Let's see. Test this test. You can put spaces. There you go. I think it'll mess up if you have multiple properties because it won't know which one's which. So, like, if I print another thing out afterwards and I connect this one to here as well, then it's not going to know at which space it needs to split it up. So it might error. It might split it up wrongly. Let's have a look. Print, test, print. Yeah, so it split it at the first space. Otherwise, it treats everything else as it. You might be able to wrap it in quotes. Yeah, you can. You can wrap it in quotes if you want to combine them. So if whatever you're printing has quotes around it, then it'll treat it as one thing. So that's all good and well. But what else can you do with it? Because printing something out, that's dead easy. Anybody can do that. So let's move on to actually changing the weather like we wanted to. So I'm going to delete this print one because I don't particularly want it, to be honest. I'll create a new one called set weather. And then in here... I need to get my ultra dynamic sky weather in my case. So I will drag off this and do get all actors of class. That'll do. I'll set it to my weather for UDS. So ultra dynamic weather. I'll do a get on this. And then just for set, just so we don't crash anything, I'll do an is valid check around it. So if it doesn't exist because we've not put ultra dynamic sky in, it won't ever. And I'll just add a print statement saying, no UDS bound. So I can drag off of this and I can do change weather using type. And then I can plug this in over here. So um, we could default most of this if we really wanted to. Equally, we could make it parameters. So let's do that. So I'm going to drag this new weather type over to set weather here. Instead of an enum, put this to a string like so. So if we have a string of the weather type we need to look at, how do we convert that to an enum? Well, rather annoyingly, Unreal doesn't have a way for you to do this in Blueprints directly. We have to do something a bit funky, but it still works completely fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the enum I want. So in this case, it's going to be the UDS weather types. And it's got a feature where we can type UDS weather types. And you can see we've got this for each loop here. And it basically loops over all the items within the enum, like so. So I can connect this to the is valid up here. Just drag that down there for a moment. Then on here, I can simply check the enum value to string, and you'll have an enum to string. Then I can say equals, equals, equals. It'll want you to say three, so that's completely fine. And then I can say, does it equal my new weather type? So we'll get new weather type, like so. But one thing I am going to do, just to make it a bit nicer, is I'm actually going to take the enum to string, and I'm going to replace all of the spaces. So I'll just put a space with nothing. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the new weather type here, replacing spaces with nothing. And then I will check these two. So what this means is you can either search for clear space skies or clear no space skies and it will still find the same thing just to make it even even nicer i guess what i'll do is also set it to lowercase so if you search for clear skies basically in any orientation if it finds it it will check it like so so that's quite a hefty chunk of code but trust me it's absolutely going to be worth it so just to re reiterate you for each over the enum you convert the enum to a string in this case, we're removing the spaces and making them lowercase, and then we're checking. If it equals true, then we're going to take our change weather from over here, which I'm going to quickly just turn to a local variable because it's annoying to have this much code. So I'll just promote this to a local variable called UDS. I'll connect it to the is valid, connect it over here. Then we can disconnect this one over here just like that. And then we've got our variable just to make it a bit nicer, really connect that in then we can connect this to the true not the false if it's the false it doesn't exist and then finally for new weather type we can just simply take the enum value from here i'll promote it to a local variable called selected enum connect this up in the middle here and we can drag this down a bit so we've promoted it to a variable there 
We don't need the completed to go up there. We can just ignore that one. And then over here, we just set the weather to the selected enum, like so. Uh, I'm going to come and set this to change just in like three seconds or something, like so. And then simply after this, return, just so it doesn't continue searching. That's it. So if we come back to the beginning, click our set weather and just tick exec so it can actually execute. Uh, it's put a space in between here. Maybe that was me. So we'll get rid of the space. We'll go into the game. And now we can change the weather to anything we want. So if we go set weather, you can see it's popped up. We can do a space. You can see it's wanting a type of string for the weather. So maybe it's snow then. There we go. And with that, I've changed the weather just like that. How cool is that? So I can come in, I can say, actually, no, I want it to rain now. And then it will now suddenly start raining. And yes, the weather's very pretty, but the key is the console commands, the cheat manager. I can do anything I want with this. One thing I will do just for here is if it hits completed, we'll just print out saying weather type doesn't exist. Because if it's got to the completed, it means it's not found anything, really. But yes, I can do anything I want with this. If I want to give myself loads of money, that's a common one, isn't it? Like in The Sims, I think it's Motherload. Let's do Motherload. That sounds cool. So in here, I'm going to type Motherload. And then we'll add an integer so for it can tell us how much we want to have. So money. And we'll set it to an int. I think Motherload in Sims gives you a set amount, but we'll let it so you can set it yourself. We'll tick exec. And then from here, we will get player pawn. Then from here, I will get my inventory, because at least for mine, the currency is stored in the inventory. And I can type add currency, just like that. Connect it into there, connect the money over to there, make it a bit nicer, and then hit compile and save. So now, if I play the game, so you can see, if I load into the game, press the tab key, we have 20 currency. But if I come out of it and press the tilde key and type mother load and give it some money, we'll say, 2000 when i press tab now i have 2020 currency how cool is that it's so easy to code them as well we can do anything we want i can add an item to my inventory but the main thing is you've got to find whatever you type in there as a string to coordinate it to the correct item id so you'll often see in games bethesda games they'll have something like spawn item and they'll put a an ID code in there and the chances are they probably have a data table with all these IDs in and they do a lookup of that ID into the data table then spawn it. If you've got a bunch of data assets this way probably won't work for you you'll need to find some way of finding it maybe looping over all data assets something like that but there's loads of ways you can use it and this is just two of them. Just remember that this is in the engine only. If you build a production game of it, these won't exist anymore. So, let's show you some real world examples. So I have my game here, my I Am From Alien Reich game. Big game jam game I worked on. And I have a cheat manager in here. And I have a bunch of different cheats I use for this. So these are all going to be common ones you might actually want in your game. And it made my life so much easier. So kill all enemies. Dead simple one. All I do is get the player. Spawn a sphere overlap radius around it for any pawns. I check if it's a type of enemy. And then I apply the damage to the enemy. A da explosion damage so they all just die immediately around me. Which is great because as soon as you start the game. You travel down here on a boat, you get out here, you get invaded by these 10 enemies. After testing a couple of times, you know it's good. Having to kill them all every single time is a nightmare. Now I just press tilde, kill all enemies, bang, every single one dies. And because I'm applying normal damage to them, it also triggers the quest elements so they all die. If you just called destroy, then it wouldn't carry on as normal. Set boat speed. This one's a little bit unique to me. All I do is I get the boat and I just increase its speed to something ridiculous when I start the game. So my boat goes flying so I get to the start of the game quicker. Move NPC to target. This one's quite good. So I've got target points around the map. If you've liked my short you'll know what I mean. So down here I've got target points in specific locations where NPCs will walk to. There's a couple more over here as well. 
every so often, I might need an NPC to go there. Maybe they've not triggered a quest, maybe there's a bug or something. Move NPC to target, I state two properties. Target's tag, so I add a tag to each of these target points, so I can easily find it again. And then I also state the tag of the NPC I want to walk to it, and then I simply tell them to move to it. That's it. Force NPC to crouch, literally just tells an NPC, you must crouch, and they crouch down. That's it. And then there's all sorts of other ones I've done, like print player abilities. So this loops over all my gameplay abilities that the player owns and just prints them out. So if I ever think I've got something added and it's not working, I can just print them out and have a look. Set truck speed. This is the same as the boat. There's a truck at the start. This just tells it to worry up. Complete quest. This is one that I'm really trying to get working, but I haven't figured out how to just yet. Basically, I want the ability to put the quest name in loop over all the active quests, if they exist, then I instantly tell it to complete. go to the completed state, that's it. At the moment, it only works for one quest because you have to hard code the quest state in, which isn't going to be fantastic. I'm just trying to find a way I can go, get the current quest, complete it. Just like that, dead simple. So that one's a work in progress. Teleport to checkpoint, I just have target points around there and I can teleport myself to it. So if I'm over the other end of the map and I want to come here, I can just teleport to it. And then the final two are just the same thing as the completed one, but more specific for it. But as you can see, cheat manager stuff are so helpful and so easy to use. So like if I play the game, I'll show you the cheat manager in action and how I use it. So you can see the boat is now sped up because I've put the command in. You'll see when I land on this beach, all the enemies are going to run out. I could kill them all, or I could type kill all enemies. Boom. All enemies dead. The task is immediately completed and we're all good. I can skip quest one, which has instantly completed quest one, and move me to the right position. So I can now run in here. I can skip through this dialogue, where he's under the floor for some reason. I can now come to here and activate the tunnel. And you can see I've got to walk around this long way, unless I come and say skip quest two, where it's put me right in the position I need to carry on. How cool is that, ladies and gentlemen? As you can see, more enemies, they'll attack me. And as I do, kill all enemies. Boom. They're all dead. Now I can continue on with my quest some more. That is the power of the cheat manager, ladies and gentlemen. Literally just create a function and go with it. Another benefit of this console command of these here is you can activate them from a widget if you want. If you create a custom UI widget that shows a non-programmer all the stuff they can click then you can use the execute console command and literally just type in the same command so if I do kill all enemies you could just execute that from anywhere in the game and it will run the command that is the power of the console command ladies and gentlemen the cheat manager terribly named because it's not cheats at all it's kind of like dev cheats it's nothing to do with in-game cheats but yes what do you think? Have you used it before or what are you planning to add to it? Let me know some good cheats everybody should add. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you've got any suggestions, please let me know below. My name is Decryption and I will see you next time.